So, uh, what do you make of it? I asked the plumber, Steve. Sure as hell looks like blood to me, he said, staring at the rusty red discharge dripping down the wall. But I'm no biochemist or anything. My wife had jokingly referred to it as blood, so that's the first thing I told the plumber. You know, as a joke. Hey, plumber Steve, uh, we got a real bad case of the old blood dripping down the walls here. Mind taking a look? Um, you're kidding, right? I stared at him in disbelief. He seemed like the kind of guy that would think that this sort of thing was funny, you know? Stupid. Uh, I don't know, man. He stroked his chin nonchalantly. Color checks out. Uh, it was roughly the same texture, wouldn't you say? This guy... I thought to myself, I'm not even sure why I called the plumber anyway. The weird thing was, there was, there weren't any pipes anywhere near the wall in question. Well, I'd gone over every inch of the place, read through all the blueprints, even drilled a hole in the base of the roof. There was simply nothing there. Uh, maybe you got a corpse or something up there. <laughs> he chuckled nervously. Uh, have you checked on your wife lately? I really do hate bad comedians. They, they're right up there with people who use whilst instead of while, and, and people who, who chew with their mouth open. You know, I just, just shook my head. I snickered half-heartedly. So, um, so there's nothing you can do? I asked. Hey man, if there's no pipe or hole or anything I can enter, he winked suggestively, then shrugged. I sighed, then thanked him for his service to my basement, which is to say that I, I told him that he was useless. He replied with a douchey smirk, then handed me a bill that had me reconsidering my chosen career. No luck? Dasha, my wife, asked. I shook my head. I just... I don't get it, I said. This shouldn't be fucking rocket surgery. I think you mean brain science, she sighed. But I'll admit, it's pretty damn weird. We'd only have the house for a little over a week, but I was already regretting buying it. I mean, sure, it was relatively cheap, and who doesn't love a big old mortgage, but, but there had been nothing but problems with it since we moved in. Lights flickering, drafty spots all over the house, strange noises in the walls, and then, and then the leak in the basement yesterday to top it all off. And don't even get me started on the neighbors. Maybe we should talk to the neighbors, Dasha suggested, peering out the kitchen window. Which one? I asked. Let's see, we got the big old weirdo, uh, the demented old crone, the blood surfer guy with a seemingly endless supply of identical white hoodies. Oh, and let's not forget the creepy middle-aged twins. Oh, come on, she poked me in the ribs playfully. Stop being such a grump. I'm sure these are nice people. Yeah, I managed to dodge them all thus far. I had heard someone knocking like crazy on the door once, but I was half asleep from a full night of failing to locate the damn sound in the walls. So, I had buried my head under the pillow and ignored whoever it was. I suppose I couldn't avoid them forever, though. It's not the neighborly thing to do, I guess. I'm sure, I replied sarcastically. Hey, hey, shouldn't you be at work? Just heading out now. She kissed me on the cheek. Love you. Don't go crazy down in the basement, you hear? No promises, I smiled. But I'll try. My wife worked wacky shifts. I guess that's what nurses do. Couldn't keep on top of her crazy work schedule half the time, so I often found myself confused when I woke up and she wasn't there, or when she suddenly came home in the middle of the night. I mostly worked remotely. The short-term freelance contracts, which basically meant whenever I felt like it. I hadn't been feeling like it since we bought the damn house, which was becoming something of an issue. It has to be the foundation, right? I muttered to myself, bringing my coffee downstairs with me. I was fixated on that wall. And the, the noises, man, I couldn't seem to let them go. The basement was fairly small and cramped. We were originally going to use it for storage. That's why I had to fix the leak post-haste. Lest all our useless crap that we never used would be rendered unusable. Maybe rust water? I suggested carefully balancing my coffee down the uneven stairs. I stopped abruptly on the last step, spilling my coffee all over myself. Normally, I would have shrieked in a rather unmanly fashion as the burning hot liquid ran down my legs, but in this instant, the shock of what I was seeing far outweighed any physical pain. The wall... The wall was squeaky clean. Not a single spot on it. I carefully put down the remnants of my coffee on the stairs and sauntered over to investigate the impossibility of it. 
but before I got more than a few steps, the lone light bulb hanging from the ceiling started flickering like crazy before going completely dark moments later. Son of a bitch, I mumbled, stumbling around blindly, knocking over several boxes of God knows what. Ding dong, the doorbell suddenly rang from upstairs. I must have knocked over every last thing in the basement in a fit of panic before I finally found the stairs, knocking over my coffee cup in the process. Fucking shit, I cried, unmanly as the hot coffee spilled all over my feet. Uh, you all right there, fella? A cheery male voice called from the darkness of the basement. Holy shit! I yelled, instinctively turning towards the sound, which, in turn, led to me tumbling down the stairs, landing flat on my back. You know, a pair of floating green emerald eyes uttered, I knew the guy who used to live here. Who the fuck is there? I demanded. Get out of my house! Oh, I do apologize. The eyes chuckled. I keep forgetting you lot need, like, lights to see. The light bulb lit up, flickering erratically like a seizure strobing light, every split second or so illuminating a slender man wearing jeans and a white hoodie. He was grinning widely, his sparkling green eyes darting all over the basement. Hey, you're, uh, the, uh, surfer guy, uh, the neighbor. Spot on, he laughed. Although I haven't surfed for quite some time. Hope you don't mind, but I figured I'd let myself in since, you know, you seemed rather preoccupied. He paced around the room idly, gracefully avoiding all the shit that I knocked over without even looking. And how the hell did he get down here so fast? And how did I not hear him coming down the stairs? He hung himself, the man said. Previous owner? Right over there. See? He pointed to a spot in the corner of the room. I squinted and blinked feverishly. Did you somehow expect him to still be dangling there? The man chuckled. Sorry, you'll just have to take my word for it. I sat up uncomfortably, my back digging into the lower steps of the stairs. I couldn't think of anything to say. What do you say to a person who manifests out of thin air in your basement? Hey, can you maybe fix the light? I said, shielding my eyes from the seizure-inducing blinking. The man laughed. He slapped his forehead theatrically. <laughs> Why, of course. I always forgot these silly little things. He snapped his fingers. And the light instantly stabilized. I swallowed deeply as his gleaming green gaze settled on me. Uh, I'm here about your plumbing, so to speak, he said, pointing to the wall. I've been told you've been having some issues with the blood flooding your basement. You know the stuff, right? It's like a thick, crimson liquid usually confined to the inside of a body. Nine out of ten doctors will tell you that having it on the outside is a classic symptom of you dying a horrible death. Uh, yeah, I said, yeah, I mean, um, it's not blood, that was just a joke, and it's not there now, so I guess it's fixed. You sure? He asked, grinning widely. Hey, maybe you should take another look. I glanced at the wall in question, and let out another rather... Unmanly shriek, as I realized it was literally covered in deep red oozing sludge, flowing incessantly from a single point close to the ceiling all the way down to the floor. That's at least a couple gallons worth, man said, stroking his chin. Quite the mess. Should see a plumber about that. I edged back against the stairs. Isn't that why you're here? I asked. Oh yeah, you're right. He threw his head back and laughed. I'm here to remind you. Re remind me? Of what? I murmured. Oh, that you already know where it comes from, fella. Y you've always known. Take some digging, that's all. You keep locking it away. I... I don't understand. Oh, you will! He grinned, his emerald eyes burrowing into mine. Oh, come on, buddy. Let's go see your wife. She'll show you. He sauntered past me and beckoned for me to follow as he started ascending the stairs. You coming or what? He asked. I haven't got all damn day. My wife. Dasha, I said, shifting relentlessly. She's at work. The man shrugged and smiled. You sure about that? He said. You sure she didn't come home while you were sleeping? Sleeping? No, it's, it was midday, wasn't it? The plumber came around noon and Dasha left for work an hour or so later. There was no way in hell I'd spent that long in the basement. Ah, uh, I see what's going on. The man slapped his forehead again. It's the temporal thingy uh, messing with you, right? Yeah. Uh, it'll do that sometimes. Some algorithmic snafu or other. I need to talk to the engineers about that. What in damnation are you on about? I said. Temporal thingy? He laughed again. A long, hearty laugh. <laughs> Nicely put, Wolfgang, he said. But it's easier if I just show you. He put his hands in his pockets and whistled cheerily as he quickly skipped up the remaining steps, disappearing through the door moments later. Last call, he yelled. 
I'm a busy man, got places to burn, people to eat, you know how it is. I sat for a while in the dim light, desperately trying to make sense of the situation. There was no such thing as sense, of course. Everything that had happened since the plumber left defied all logic and reason, but somehow, somehow it all seemed so, so familiar. Like I'd seen it happen before. I sighed deeply and I followed him up to the first floor. There you are, Wolfie boy. He grinned as I emerged through the door. I was just about to call off our arrangement, but I'm glad that you came through to your senses, you know, as it were. Arrangement? I asked, staring up at the impossibly imposing figure before me. Come on, he said, and gave me a pat on the back. I shuddered as the freezing cold fingers dug into my flesh, if only for a brief moment. Trip down memory lane is required. I followed him through the kitchen into the hallway, momentarily losing focus when I noticed how utterly dark it was outside. Then regaining it again when I spotted the massive hole in the wall just outside the living room. I stood in absolute silence, just staring at it. It wasn't there before, was it? No, definitely not. I would have remembered a man-sized hole in the wall. I mean, surely, that, that's not something you just forget. Couldn't figure it out, could you? He said, peering into the hole. Where are the sounds coming from? Rats in the walls, wolves in the walls, couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, couldn't... Leave it alone, just had to fix it. No, that's... I said, blinking erratically. That's not what happened, that's not true. Sure it is, Wolfie, sure it is. He said darkly, staring at me. You weren't all Looney Tunes when you couldn't eat your cereal in peace. Tore into the wall with a sledgehammer. I mean, I get it. Your breakfast is the most important meal of the day. No, no I didn't. I edged myself back confused. I mean, I mean, I can't remember. I can't... Thing is, Wolfie... He said, it's dangerous to tear down walls when you don't know what you're doing. Some of those suckers are load-bearing, you know. Sure, it might be structurally sound for a little while, but imagine your wife coming home in the dead of the night, all tired and grumpy from a long, strenuous shift, and she notices there's a giant flipping hole in the wall. And she's all like, what an everlasting damnation has Wolfie been up to now? And pops in there for a quick gander, bumps into the wrong thing, and boom! Roof collapses on her squishy body, splitting her skull open like a ripe melon. Blood steadily flooding into a pool in the corner, slowly seeping down, down, down. Ugh. Man, wouldn't that be something? I swallowed deeply, tears manifesting in my eyes. Out of nowhere, my hands trembling like crisp autumn leaves, heart pounding out of my chest. No. I murmured weakly. It can't... That's not what happened. The man snickered and pointed to the hole. One way to find out, Wolfie boy, he said. Just a quick look. Then we can talk. It only took a moment for me to peer into the hole. It was the longest moment of my life. Dust swirled in hypnotizing patterns within the small, cramped hole, and in the corner I could see a massive pile of rubble, bricks, boards, nails, girders, a pair of unnaturally pale feet sticking out wearing Dasha's shoes that I got her for her birthday the year they were on sale. So cheap, half price, and the blood, oh god, the blood, so much blood, oceans of it, spilling off into creeks, rivers, floods, all leading to a single corner, seeping down, down, down. No! I cried. Dasha, please, God! No! I don't know why, but I started clearing the debris. Diving into the pile, throwing stones and bricks and boards every which way. She was long dead. Every last part of me knew that, but it didn't matter. Doesn't matter. You have to be sure. You, you gotta be sure. Can't let there be a doubt. It's my fault. My fault! Dasha, it's all my fault. <laughs> this is all your fault. The man chuckled. That's how these things usually go, Wolfie boy. Guilt, despair, damnation, anguish, all the sweet emotions you mistake for love. Not love, Wolfgang. It's self-preservation. You lot can't handle the pain, so you come to me for the absolute solution. You come to me for... Absolution. Shut up! I yelled. Shut up! Shut up! Excuse me. He held up his hand dramatically. Just spitting the truth over here. I didn't mean anything by it. Let me know when you're ready to talk about our arrangement. I collapsed in a pile, sobbing inconsolably. Arrangement, I sniffed. What do you mean? He laughed heartily. 
Wolfgang, Wolfgang. How have you not caught on yet? I mean, I'm a deal maker by trade. Surely you've gathered that much by now. You mean... I dried my tears and stared at him. You mean you can save her? Oh, I do apologize, he said, grinning widely. I still seem to be under the impression that this is the first time that we've been having this conversation. That one is on me, Wolfie boy. Temporal, snafu, and all that. What do you mean? I yelled hysterically. Can you just tell me already? He crouched down in front of me. This isn't our first talk, Wolfgang, he said. In fact, I've lost. I lost count. <laughs> but I'm guessing that we're up to the hundreds by now. It always ends the same. But I do like to check up on my clients, you know, in case they're experiencing dealer's remorse. What? I whispered. What talk? What are you offering me? He laughed again. Your wife. Sweet. Perfect. Dasha. Of course, I could, uh, I could give her back. Just like that. He snapped his fingers. But there's a catch. Always a catch. I sat up. Meaning his unflinching gaze. What? I asked. My soul? You want my soul? Just take it! Whatever would I do with that? <laughs> he chuckled. Then what? I yelled. What do you want? Oh, it's really simple. He said. You can have this glimpse of her. A yeah, few minutes every morning before she leaves for work. That's it. Some back and forth banter, kiss on the cheek, and goodbye. Then you'll wake up, discovering her body all mashed up to tasty, sludgy corpse juice. Go through all that again, all the horror, all the guilt, all the pain, all the suffering, all that for five minutes of her. Hardly seems worth it, does it? I nodded weakly. It is worth it, I said. It will always be worth it. Well then. He grinned. Who am I to stand in the way of perpetual self-inflicted torment? He grabbed my hand and shook it vigorously. See you tomorrow, Wolfie boy, he said. Always a pleasure. He disappeared out the hole without a sound, leaving me a sobbing, convulsing mass on top of the crushed corpse of my wife. My sweet, perfect Dasha. I'll never let you go. I'll always choose the agony. There's no compromise, no... No option, no other way. Before I go back, before I lose myself, I have to remind myself. I have to remember, always remember, never let it go. Never let her go. It is worth it. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just want to make sure that all of you guys are still staying safe and doing your best to stay inside and keep yourself quarantined if you can do so. For those of you who can't, really appreciate you guys doing what you, you know, have to do. So, all the best to all of you who are still working, and all the best to all of you who are forced to kind of stay home and are not able to work. If you guys are missing out on a lot of the conventions, which at this point, all of them that I was planning on going to this year, with the exception of San Japan, uh, looks like have been either cancelled or pushed back. If you guys were looking forward to any of the conventions this year and are missing out on a lot of the artwork from some of your favorite authors or artists, take a look in the description down below. At least until the quarantine is over, you'll be able to find links to a bunch of my artist friends as well as authors uh, in the description of every video. And of course, I will be bringing you guys stories every single day from now until the end of time, available here on YouTube as well as here on the podcast on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, and Google, and wherever else you can get podcasts. And now a very special thank you, big thank you, the biggest thank you I can possibly give to all of you who support on Patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, who help keep the lights on in my house. Patreons such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chompinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, 
G. Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cow, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Gabrielle Undefined, Barbie Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Dr. Strawberry, Barbara Masio, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, Let's Get Scared, S-Man, Brandy Hassanori, and King DDD. Thank you guys so much for supporting on Patreon, as well as all of you that are shown in the description down below. And sweet dreams, everyone.